Okay, uh, today, as you can see here, uh, we're going to look at a number of poems within uh, Best New Poets 2019. I think there are some fairly strong works uh, within this collection, as well as poems that seem to get in their own way, uh, and we'll look at that tomorrow. Uh, and they get in their own way, I say that, especially with regard to their structure, that is how they appear on the page. I think some of the uh, poets are tinkering with the structure of the poem so much that it gets it, it foregrounds itself over the actual content or what the poem is attempting to communicate. But let's just start uh, right at the beginning of the collection with uh, Margaret Cipriano's Home Alone. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Margaret Cipriano's uh, Home Alone. While the husband is at work, I fold napkins into neat squares. Handsome men knock on my door. They want to show me their books, but are distracted by my bright, honest napkins. I tell them I'm sorry. I can't help them helping me. They say not to worry. They're more interested in my pink azaleas. Those are azaleas. No, I tell them. That's a child's drawing. The house moves in the breeze. The whole thing is starting to feel a bit, a little flimsy. What about the rooms, they ask. These aren't rooms, I reply. Those are the pink azaleas. Your hus husband must be a physicist, they say. They don't know, but the husband defeathers magpies. I match corner to corner. One of the men pulls out a small knife and begins slicing an orange. Where did you get that orange, I ask. The little jeweled wedges. This isn't an orange, he says. It's the name of the boy who loves you. He holds up the peel, a smile with no teeth. Okay. Uh, the reason for this, the various graphics that I'm putting up here is because this poem, if you can take anything away from it, because the language is not that gripping or astonishing, save for the startling image uh, at the poem's conclusion, is what meaning we can derive from the text. For me, the content reminded me a great deal of Jean Baudelaire's uh, seminal work, Simulacra Simulation, as you can see here. The book details the concept of reality, namely, it seeks to examine the relationships between reality, symbols, and society, in particular, the signific uh, significations and symbolism of culture and media involved in constructing and understanding of shared existence, our shared experiences, reality. Simulacra are copies that depict things that either had no original or that no longer have an original. Simulation is the imitation of the operation of a real world process or system over time. Baudelaire theorized how the human condition and our consumption of reality and how skewed our perception of our world can become. So within the book, a strong illustration he gives is the idea of a map. Imagine you were presented a map of Medicine Hat. The map is completely in keeping with every other map you've ever examined in your past. The, this would be what Baudelaire would call a simulation, merely an imitation of what could be deemed the real. Had the roadmap of Medicine Hat, however, been made into a perfectly scaled three-dimensional model of Medicine Hat to such a point and degree that one could not tell the real city from the fake or three-dimensional model, then we are now dealing with what he calls simulacra. So in this way, we can begin to see, like Cipriano's poem, Baudelaire is grappling with what is truth. What is, in fact, reality? Are the azaleas of this poem real, or are they merely a child's drawing, as the speaker suggests? There is a great instability, Baudelaire argues, in language. Cipriano uh, echoes that sentiment with the line, quote, the whole thing is starting to feel a little flimsy, unquote, meaning our interpretation of the real, the image, the language we construct in order to explain or even examine our world, our reality, is unreliable because we are imperfect and unreliable actors as well. One of the most memorable moments uh, contained within this poem is its conclusion. Quote, this isn't an orange, he says. It's the name of the boy who loves you. He holds up the peel, a smile with no teeth, unquote. The instability of the image and the unreliability of language that constructs it reminds me, too, of a famous painting by surrealist artist Rene Magritte titled The Treachery of Images, as we can see above. The painting features the image of a pipe, accompanied by the statement when translated to English, which says, this is not a pipe. Magritte, like Baudelaire, like Cipriano, is questioning what exactly constitutes reality. Does an image of a pipe suffice enough uh, to stand in for the real of reality, of a real pipe? He's saying no. And how precisely should we interpret the world dangling around us? Okay, let's take a look at the collection's next poem by Rachel Uwada Clipper, titled Boys by Shape. Boys by shape. I want more of everything. Octopuses have three hearts. Are you happy with the way things are? I asked you. What I really wanted to ask you was, what would you do with three hearts? You had just come in from the rain. 
your clothes carrying sky. I was in the kitchen breaking the wooden moon out of an avocado. I wanted to learn you by shape. I was looking for a wildness, sorry, a wideness, the hollers, the ways you sprawled and gave. I wanted to, to be able to see it even late night, to feel it in the wild limb dark. I liked you because I didn't have to think or be honest so much. Like when you go to the grocery store and buy things you can't really live off of. Dark chocolate, cheap wine, cinnamon, pounds of oranges, pulpy black fruit. It was a kind of paring down, being with you, a winnowing to the wing bone. I don't think this is going anywhere, I said, and I didn't know where it was supposed to go. It's just a thing to say when you mean to say that you have been starving. Okay. I think uh, there are two or three uh, poetically evocative moments within this poem quote you had just come in from the rain your clothes carrying sky i was in the kitchen breaking the wooden moon out of an avocado unquote i think there's some great beauty and how clifford cast this brilliant and fresh image of rain on clothes the carrying of sky in the pit of an avocado the wooden moon also towards the end of the poem we get quote it was a kind of paring down being with you a winnowing to the wing bone unquote so some startling even ambiguous imagery uh, going on there sonically engaging as well with the winnowing of to the wing bone in this way clifford is really challenging the image bringing great surprise to our eyes due to her grappling with how exactly she should present and even represent the image to us the reader okay we're in today's lecture with charlie peck's poem noise i once attended a stand-up show in amsterdam and not speaking a word of dutch i just laughed along with the crowd letting myself get caught up with the noise it's the same logic of applause and food fights. I can't think about the bubonic plague without getting anxious. When I watch planet Earth, I root for both prey and predator. The border between humor and disgust blurs, neatly so it's, it's often hard to say. I was driving home from the grocery store last week and saw that my neighbor had painted and hung a new sign on a shed, Thieves Will Be Shot. And Kate asked, who's thieves? In high school, a boy did a Gallagher impression after prom, smashing watermelons on stage with a hammer, his fake mustache falling off mid-swing. And then two weeks later, his parents received a bill for $30,000 to replace the pulp smattered curtain. Or that time in second grade, after we had just moved, when a quiet boy in my class asked for a ride home, my mother, new to the city, got lost in cross-stitched neighborhoods in the fading light because the boy didn't know which was his. And he started crying, and my mother started to cry too, and we drove until the boy saw a familiar park, and eventually we found it, his house, and his mother was on the lawn with two officers, and she's crying, and she's crying too. And then the drive home after, my mother whispering, shit, 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 and wiping her eyes. All right, so I think this poem sort of ties into Cipriano's, uh, where the poet is asking the speaker of the poem to question reality, to acknowledge how unstable and unreliable reality is especially when we are mediated that is to say our experiences is somehow interrupted perhaps here as the poem's title suggests interrupted or mediated by noise i think this concept is especially apparent in the poem's opening stanza where the speaker of the poem doesn't understand the language but is still sort of playing along to get quote caught up in the noise unquote it really seems as if a case is starting to be built around the relationship of this collection's poetry and how they each are starting to access some fairly common themes. We'll revisit that and other ideas for tomorrow's lecture. Okay, questions, as always, uh, please email me if, if you have any questions or concerns. A reminder, uh, the final essay is due by midnight on Monday, which is June 1st. Also, I posted the poster test in Blackboard, so please complete it by midnight tonight. Okay, guys, thank you for listening. Bye.